All right. But it's great to be with everyone this morning. So Matt, thanks again for jumping on. Thanks for joining me. This is always fun to do things like this. Yep. Especially when the internet's been a little bit funky as well. I know, right? <laughs> we'll get there. Oh, we will. Oh, I'm learning. I, I now at least know how to turn StreamYard on and how to get back in if I get kicked <laughs> off. So, so I'm learning. <laughs> oh. oh, well, guys, um, yeah, just great to have everybody here. Um, if you've been following along with me or, uh, or you know, this kind of page or the other page, you will have seen that Matt and I have done quite a number of uh, Facebook Lives together uh, over the last year or so, probably longer. And Matt has been part of um, all of our online conferences. But besides all of that, Matt is and his beautiful wife, Trish, are just beautiful, dear friends of ours. And it's always just a real joy to do these type of things together. So Matt, just in case there's anybody that's jumping on for the first time, and they're like, oh, this guy's new. Who's Matt Beckenham? <laughs> Can you tell them a little bit about you? Oh, I can do that. Uh, so thanks, Lana. It's always a privilege and an honour to be in this place with you and doing this kind of thing. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so, yep, I'm Matt, married to Trish, three adult children, um, and we've been doing this thing called marriage for 30 years. So it's just, uh, it's been just an incredible, powerful, wonderful journey. Uh, and so much of the revelation I sit in flows from the relationship that I've shared with, with Trish uh, through the, the brilliant times and the challenging times. But as far as for me, I run a small church here in Sydney, Australia called Haberfield Baptist Church. And again, it's a church that I've been at for quite some time, but we have a really strong focus on the concept of the prophetic voice of God and the Father's heart. Yeah. And uh, we love to teach people how to hear the Father's voice, and not just hear it, but to test it. And we believe that any voice that you can test is a voice that you can trust. And a voice that you can trust is somebody that you can love. And we are designed to love our heavenly dad as we love others. But uh, in discovering his voice, we've just seen so many people being set free to live the life of fullness. So, yep, that's kind of me. Yeah, so good. I know so many people that um, have been following us and, you know, have been part of our Facebook lives that we're doing. You know, we've received, I know you have too, you know, so many testimonies of just how the Lord has been um, activating people. You know, and hearing his voice and recognizing the language of the Holy Spirit. And yeah, it's just, it's really a joy. Like I just, I know I say this, but like every time, but it's because it's the truth. Like I just, I love doing these things with you because we just, we flow, you know, the Holy Spirit moves, we're on the same page. It's just, yeah, it's really cool to do this together. Yeah. yeah. One of the beauties I think, Lana, is when we first connected uh, in churches here in Sydney, there was not a lot of talk about a seeing gift or a seer gift or a prophetic voice um, and these days and as you and I have both seen um, it's like the bride of Christ that the church the, the body of believers are coming awake yeah. and it's not just for the few to hear or to see God it's for all and it's just I just really believe the season that we're in is that there is many more voices that have been established and growing uh, and learning uh, the very things that a bunch of years ago that we found wow who do we go to who do we talk to yeah. now there's like a host of people and i can't wait to see what this generation um, brings to life it's going to be amazing yeah it's amazing just watching people recognize like even in the things that you guys have been doing with dream interpretation and i jumped on a facebook live you did the other day uh with was it her name courtney i think yep, maybe that's yeah it. yeah mm -hmm. and uh it was amazing guys if you didn't um if you didn't jump on that facebook live i reshared it on my page matt and um and courtney did a, a powerful broadcast but i think in the middle of your conversation both of you were saying you know people were having dreams and not even recognizing that they were hearing the voice of the father and coming into a space where you were helping activate them and you know help them helping them understand the father's voice they were then being awakened to this place of oh my gosh this is god speaking to me like it's just amazing you yeah, know and i think that's the well you know you know as well as i do lana that's part of the beauty of some of the things that we get to see like mm. i've been teaching about god loving us and, and interacting with us but when you watch it actually happen in the lives of other people 
There is no greater joy than to sit with someone when all of a sudden they've gone, I have just encountered Jesus. Yes. I, I have it. just <laughs> met Jesus. And it's just, and you know, and there's no words around that. You try and find words to describe that. And people are looking for the words that they normally use in language, but they recognize the encounter that they're having is so beyond that, that uh, I love it when people start making words up too. Yes. <laughs> There's just not a word there to describe it. So it's, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just, you know, and I really love, like, I, I've been on this verse my whole life, but in the last few weeks, um, I feel like the Lord's re-stirring it in me. But, and I know we know this really well, but in John 10, 27, you know, it says, my sheep hear my mm -hmm. voice and they know me and they follow me. And I was thinking about it this week and I thought, you know what, it doesn't say, if you are this type of person, if you look this way, if you do these certain things, like if you're a sheep, like if you, you know him, yeah. you can hear his voice. And just that awakening to that place of access that we have, you know, to oh, hear the voice of God. Yeah. Because it, it, it says there, my sheep, not my shepherd. Like it's not just one person that hears the voice, it's his sheep. And yeah. so I... Uh, there's so much to say on that. I know that's not what we're here to talk about today, but there's so much just on that one verse for me of the Father's love for us and his willingness to have access. And if you've ever been in a relationship with a person where there's a willingness to have access to their life, their heart, then you know, you know the love of that moment. And that's, yeah, anyway, that's, yeah. there's one yeah. on that maybe. I'm like, I could so just dive into this. <laughs> <laughs> So good. Oh, so, so good. <laughs> yep. oh, well, guys, the reason we jumped on today is um, many of you may have seen it. Uh, you may not have. I released a prophetic word yesterday. I've got it here in front of me just to be able to refer to. Um, but it was titled a prophetic word to those who are burning with an intense fire, heralding the message return to the first love. And, uh, and this is obviously a message that um, if you've been following along with uh, Lana Vorza Ministries for any amount of time, you will know that that is a message that, you know, it just burns within me that I herald. And I was sitting with the Lord um, a couple of days ago and he gave me this prophetic word. And so in the midst of my... Um, forming this prophetic word, typing it out. I, I shot it off to Matt and I said, hey, Matt, can you have a read of this and um, let's have a conversation. And out of that place, um, Matt really helped me in kind of encouraging me in what I was hearing and what I was, the way I was articulating it. And then I went off and I started vacuuming and I heard the Holy Spirit say, hey, do a Facebook Live with Matt on this. So I text Matt and I said, what do you reckon? And he's like, yeah, the part on, on purity really spoke to me too. So that's what we're going to dive into today. That's a little bit of context. Um, but if you haven't read the prophetic word, I encourage you to just go back and, and have a look at it. Um, but really what I believe right now is that um, for these ones that are, are really carrying this message, that are really, it's not just, oh, I know that there is a returning to the first love happening uh, in the body of Christ. This is those that are carrying such a fire that it is burning within you so strongly that it feels like fire in your bones and you just have to keep talking about it. It's an impartation that the Lord has, has released to you for this hour to really be releasing that message and encouraging people to return to that place of intimacy, the place where Jesus is, is our everything. He is our, our first love. He is our beloved, you know, the greatest adoration of our heart. And so as we dive in, I encourage you as always, you know, just keep your heart open, be listening for the Holy Spirit, because I, I really believe he's going to minister to you right now. So Matt, do you want to just start off by, um, Let's have a conversation just around the whole aspect of purity and, uh, and what, what's been stirring in you uh, around that. Yeah. Thanks, Lana. Anyone who knows you, knows you would know that this word for you is part of who you are. It's, it's your identity. I think if I ever received a word from you that didn't have this concept in it, I'd be going, <laughs> where's, where's Lana gone? And uh, yeah. who's actually given me this word? because it's what you carry, it's it's what you leak uh, in the, into the kingdom of God, it's what you overflow into the kingdom of God. And I think that that statement of purity, purity can't be hidden. And anytime 
uh, someone tries to hide away from that place, it, it keeps being drawn to the surface. It's, it's such a powerful uh, dynamic of the transformation that's actually happening inside of a person. And I love the way that, that when you spoke about the purity is being drawn forth. Okay, the word forth is not a not a word we often use in our language until we read the Bible and we see it's there, but it's drawn out, drawn forth, come out. And uh, it's again, it's a statement of what the Father has done within us. We can't earn it. We can't work hard enough for it. Uh, we can't achieve it in our own strength. Uh, it's faith alone that draws us into this place that we call a relationship with our Heavenly Dad. And in that place, uh, and again, this is what the sacrifice of Christ did for us. It brought us into a place where we are cleansed. Yeah. And like, that, like Jesus said to the Apostle Peter, what I have declared clean, let no one declare unclean. And I know we've touched on this before, Lana, but this concept <clears throat> sorry, of being clean yeah. is we often, uh, uh, we often go in and out of that, as in I'm not clean and now I'm clean. I'm not. And Jesus is like, I have cleansed you. Yeah. I have done this work. Your identity is not based on what you've done. It's on who you are. And we then, and we want to believe for that, but often the deeds of our lives steal, kill and destroy from those moments of our identity. And so when you, call, when you said call forth the purity, then you said call forth the holiness. The holiness is, our, is our, how God has set us apart, sanctified us, if we can use that kind of language, and, and drawn us into a place of purpose and, and, and identity because we are here to serve him in purity and in holiness. And, and so these two key things, um, when I was young, it was like I had to work hard to get those things. I had to, to try and, and make myself so accountable that I'd never made a step wrong. And then when I made a step wrong, it was like, oh, no, I've destroyed yeah. purity. And God's like, you haven't. It's why I sent Jesus. That's, that's why he came. Uh, and, and now, as you're calling it for, forth, it's like, and when I read your word last night, it was like listening uh, to the prophets of the Old Testament calling the remnant out those who have not turned away. It was like God saying to Elijah, there are 7,000 who have not bent the knee to Baal. And I'm, I'm sending you back to partner with them. And I love that as well. It's this calling out and calling forth. And so when, you're, when I'm reading your word, I'm just linking it into all these biblical things that are going on. And, and it's, such a, it's such a powerful thing. So yeah, thanks for sharing that word. Yeah, no worries. Thank you for reading it for me. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting because I was just looking, um, watching the comments and I saw, um, I'm sorry if I get your name wrong, I think it was Andrea somewhere, um, you wrote a comment and you said, um, I thought purity meant I had to be good enough. And when I read that, I thought, you know what, that's exactly, that's that was my journey for a very long time. And you've so articulated that, Matt, as well, by what you were just saying. You know, I always thought that if I get all of my I's dotted and my T's crossed and I'm walking perfectly, then I'm walking in purity. And, um, and so I, I felt like even through this prophetic word, you know, the Lord said, I'm, I'm bringing those or those that are arising in this hour with this message are calling forth the purity, um, you know, into the church and they're calling forth for holiness. But it's, if you look at the prophetic word, these ones, they're living in the place of burning adoration for Jesus. Like they're living in this place of awakening daily of who he is. And so then out of that place, I am then calling forth for purity. I'm calling forth holiness. And so it's the overflow of me living in this relationship with my beloved. It's not something that I'm striving for. If I'm truly in love with Jesus, I'm going to walk in purity. I'm going to walk in the awakening that he has cleansed me, that not one day I'm, I'm clean and the next day I'm not. I'm going to live in that revelation of my identity. And uh, I know this is a little bit off topic, but it's been bugging me uh, since we got on and, and just happened to have it here. I read a, a, um, a quote by Catherine Kuhlman this week and I, I just have to read it. I feel like this is going to minister to somebody this morning. And it said this, or she said this, I made a consecration of my life that I had never made before when I saw that it was possible for me to yield my life my body as a living sacrifice, a sacrifice so consecrated to him that the name of God Almighty may be glorified through the life of a sinner saved by the grace of God. Now listen to this. 
The Heavenly Father does not ask for golden vessels. He does not ask for silver vessels. God asks for yielded vessels. Those who will submit their will to the will of the Father and the greatest human attainment in all of the world is for a life to be so surrendered to him that the name of God Almighty will be glorified through that life. I surrendered unto him all there was of me, everything. Then for the first time I realized what it meant to have real power. And it just really, its that quote spoke to me on so many levels. But I began to ponder that quote and I thought, you know what? When you hear words like walking in purity, walking in holiness and, and, and words like language like that, it's so easy to fall into this place of thinking, I need to have everything all together. I need to have everything perfect. But the Lord isn't looking for perfection. He's looking for that place of yielding. He's looking for that place of, um, of surrender. And, and humility and, and I just I love even I know this is going a little bit off topic but I love that even she said then for the first time I realized what it meant to have real power the power is in the yielding the power is in that place of surrender and so in that place of intimacy where I'm burning with the fire of the first love where my eyes are locked in the fiery eyes of Jesus then from that place I am moving in purity, I'm moving in holiness, and I'm 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 going out and calling forth the message of everybody to come to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me just back that up, Mana, because Andrea, you are good enough. Mm. <laughs> so God so loved the world, He gave His only Son. Like you are good enough, and often in our culture, we determine what is pure and we determine what is perfect, mm. and. However, we determine that can be from the way we're raised to the country we're raised in. Um, there's all different kinds of things that go into pl into play on what I declare to be pure or what I declare to be holy. And I think this is the season where the church goes back to the word of God in that. And let's just find out what he declares holy and let's live from that place. Uh, and so when someone comes along and says that I need to do this or I need to do that, I want to recenter them on what the father says rather than what even they feel like at times that they're sensing inside of themselves now if there's a if there's something going on in your life where there's a like a chronic sin or there's something then yeah mm -hmm. but we're not here to judge that we're here to love yeah. into that we're, we're here to empower that and again your identity is not based on your behavior mm -hmm. your identity is based on who god created you to be who he designed you to be and so we were created for purity we were created for holiness now i know so much of the church will time go no no that's not true but we were created in the very image of jesus now that hasn't changed that still happens like and through christ all things have been reconciled to him that's just the word of god and and that's like a mind-blowing verse that I'm still trying to get my head around what that verse actually means. Because again, all things have been reconciled to God through Christ is a profound statement. And so this is a season like what you're doing, Lana, is that you're calling out the identity that, of the design that we have. This is how we are created to be, and I, I love it. Yeah, so good. You know, I was even thinking... Um, over the last couple of days that we are in this new era right now and the Lord's speaking about, you know, let's talk about this, like um, this specific prophetic word. So there's people rising up in this hour who are burning with this message of returning to the first love. And so here we have this message being heralded. We have this, um, this prophetic word of the Lord that says you've entered into a new era, things look completely different. The Lord is highlighting the place of purity. He's highlighting the place of holiness. There's all these different themes that the Lord is speaking about. And I was thinking, you know, it can become overwhelming um, in this kind of new era where God's doing a new thing. There's a new wineskin. Well, God, I've got to make sure that I get everything completely right to make sure I'm riding, like I'm actually walking in exactly the right direction, that I'm stepping exactly where you need me to step. And I felt like, you know, that people could be feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Like, what if I step in the wrong direction? What if I miss it? What if I, you know, all of those questions. And I came back to this prophetic word that I released last night about the heralding of the first love. And I thought of it like this. I thought, 
you know, the more time that you and I are in that place of intimacy with the Lord, the more time we're in that place of, you know, even John 10, 27, you know, hearing his voice, living in the place of Matthew 4, 4, every word that flows out of the mouth of God. As I'm living in the daily delight of being in his presence, then I can live in the place of rest, knowing that my identity is not in what I'm doing. My identity is found in who he says that I am. My purity and holiness and, you know, the pure in heart shall see God are found in that place of seeking him and embracing the refiner's fire. And then as I'm sitting in that place with him and I'm seeking to know him and I'm burning with that first love, then I'm going to follow in his footsteps. Like he's going to lead me. And all week I've had this picture of like when I was little, my dad, we'd go to weddings and uh, I was probably, I don't know, five or six maybe. And it would come time for the dance, you know, and everybody gets up and dances. And so as a little girl, you know, with my little white dress, I wanted to go up and dance. Well, I had no clue how to dance. So what would I do? I'd put my feet on my dad's feet and I'd hold his hands. And all I'd have to do was look at in my dad's eyes and he would be the one that would lead me. And I wasn't panicked as he was leading me thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. It was so much fun. I would giggle and I'd laugh because it was so great. And I was in this place of rest as he was holding my hands and he was leading me through the dance floor. And I, I just, I felt that again this morning for people watching that you may hear the messages of purity. You hear these prophetic words about holiness and the first love and, and stewarding well and all of the, the kind of narrative that is surrounding this new era. And there could be that feeling of, oh my gosh, like it's a little bit overwhelming. I want to encourage you with that picture because I believe that the Lord is heralding this message of first love not only to bring the church back into the place of alignment that she's meant to be in. At the end of the day, it's not about anything else but Jesus, right? It's not about building platforms, programs, our names getting in lights. It's got nothing to do with that. It's all about the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus being glorified and the kingdom of God being extended. And so from that place, God is aligning us in this new era. He's purifying, he's refining, he's recalibrating, and he's bringing us, I believe, as we, as we lean into this place of faith rest within him that says, if I'm living in that place of the burning adoration and I'm a friend of God, then I just rest in his arms and he's the one that leads me through this divine dance. I'm not struggling and fighting and trying to go in an opposite direction. I'm yielded. I'm surrendered because I'm living in that place of first love. And then from there, I'm led, I'm guided in this beautiful dance of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure, Lana, we've spoken a little bit about that divine dance before. Every dance has a rhythm. The rhythm is what we look for in life. It's the rhythm what we look for when we do music. And all of us know when we hear a song and it's out of rhythm, and we're just going, oh, what's going on with that? It's the same deal if I try to dance. Like, there's going to be some pretty funky rhythms that are going on there and people are going to go, oh, it's probably not the way we should dance. And it's true. <laughs> I, I, take my, I take my model from David that I'm willing to be even more undignified than this and, um, and, and keep going. But the, the dance, and so, Lana, you can hear the memory that's inside of you, and it's a very dear memory. And that's that's a moment of connection. That's a moment then that spoke to you eternally as well. And so right there from the age of five, this little girl in the white dress has had an encounter with her earthly dad that has now transcended to her heavenly dad. And the white, white and dreams of visions, purity and faith. And again, it's no surprise to me that at the age of five, you're wearing white dresses and you're, you're in that place. And what are you doing? You're treading on your dad's feet. Now, uh, if you're doing that today, you'd probably be in pain. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, back then, he's like, I am just so cool to do this. Why? Because this is a moment between father and, and daughter. And, and for lots of people, um, they didn't have that experience. They didn't know that. And their the earthly dad just didn't. Uh, give them that encounter of what a heavenly dad can do. Um, and again, um, in that place, this is the moment where the Holy Spirit wants to break into that place. The Holy Spirit wants to affirm who you are. The Holy Spirit wants to create that environment where there are memories. 
And I also say to people who have had a very dysfunctional past like that, that often you are called to be the curse breakers for the generation that is to follow. Because uh, into that, you've seen things that have not worked. You've seen things that have been abusive. You've seen things that have been hurtful. And you guys are in that place right now to, to bring a next generation into a place of freedom. And so they get raised in a place that's safe. Yeah. They get raised in a place where it doesn't matter if they tread on their dad's feet. They get raised in a place where they can learn a rhythm long before they even know what rhythm is. And this is the generation, I think, right now, where we can be uh, restoring and bringing that holy, those Holy Spirit moments into people's lives of recreation. And like you've been talking about the Selah moment and the rest moment, the divine reset, in quite some time. And we're seeing it. And all of us are seeing it. Uh, and the temptation right now is to run back to what the way things were and the rhythms that we had before. But this is season now and like your word gave to us last night this is a shaking time yeah. now if it shakes us to the point where we run back to where we were yeah. then i think we've missed the point mm -hmm. and so for so many people that and like even pastors that, are, that like a lot of my friends are pastors and, and we're going okay what's next for the church how are we going to cope with this how are we going to work through this and there's the father going i'm in charge of this yeah. i'm here yeah. there is presence here and as we lean in, um, and so the verse that's been really sitting in my spirit lately is that one from Isaiah 40, verse 31, those who wait upon the Lord. For those who learn to wait are the ones who will learn to soar. Yes. Oh, right? That's so good. That is a profound statement. Mm. But nobody that I have found likes hearing God saying, just wait. <laughs> yes. Like, I've not enjoyed that, but God's like... Yeah. So you don't want to soar? Is that what I'm hearing? I've been a little oh, yeah. bit sarcastic with that. But, <laughs> yeah. but to me, the great revelation of that moment, you know, if I can learn to wait, what does that mean? The Holy Spirit would call that the fruit of patience or self-control. It's in that place of just going, I don't really get everything that's happening around me right now. And some of it just really, it's really clunky. And I'm just, and it's hurting, it's painful. But the Father's like, just wait. This season will end and there will be glory that flows from it. And like my story is filled with those moments of me just wanting to bang the door down and Jesus is like, mm, it's going to open at the right time. Just wait and you will learn to soar. So maybe that's a word for somebody today. That's so good, Matt, because, and you didn't know this, and I just, <laughs> the way God works blows my mind. So one of the prophetic words that I will be releasing um, maybe today, maybe tomorrow is on the word patience because I had a dream over the last, um, oh gosh, probably three weeks ago. And in, in the middle of the night, I woke up in the dream and I saw a big plaque in front of me and oh, it was a wooden plaque and it said the word patience. And I literally woke up and went, oh no. <laughs> because that word is so hard. And, and as I've sat with the Lord, he has really been unpacking a revelation to me about how we even minister to the Lord by in our waiting, how we that that place of um, surrendering in the process of waiting and patience, how we minister to him in that place, but also how he builds us in that place so that we can soar. And you know that one of my favorite words is the word linger. Mm. And, uh, and I think that that is is such a word right now like when you were saying that i really felt like that was a word for people yeah i can see people in the comments going patience now like oh <laughs> yeah but I, I feel like yeah there's a real revelation that the lord is wanting to unpack in that place of you know what does it mean to wait upon the lord you know and what does it mean to to linger what does it mean in this moment where you know things are shaking and the temptation is to run back to what was comfortable because let's be real right patience sometimes is really uncomfortable and you do want to bang the doors down but in that place I feel like right now that we're in that there is such significant impartations and revelation that the Lord is wanting to release to us in this new era for this new era that if we were to run ahead we would actually just be in a place where we would miss what he's trying to say, but out of his love, he will keep repeating. But it's just really interesting because yesterday I had an encounter with the Lord and I saw this um, scene 
and it reminded me of the matrix because all of a sudden it, everything slowed down and I watched everything in slow motion. All these objects were moving around and they were all moving really slowly. And I said to the Lord, God, what are you saying? And he said, Lana, he said, in this moment where if, if my people slow down, he's like, you will see things clearer and you'll see things more defined. And I just, I, I just felt this invitation from the Lord that right now we're being positioned in that place of alignment where we're being realigned as the body, like the entire body of Christ into this place of first love, this divine sailor moment where, you know, there's even been a natural kind of slowing down we've had to do. So in that place, and we're waiting on the Lord, I believe that the Lord is wanting in this moment to release specific revelation for us that we need in order to build with him in this new era and transition from places, particularly in the church where we've built for the Lord. And now we're moving into this time where we're going to understand in a greater way what it looks like to build with him. Yeah, really good, Matt. It's 100%, Lana. Like even as you're sharing that, if, if I can be really honest right now uh, as a pastor, um, when COVID-19 happened, every program stopped. Now, initially people were like, oh, how, how is that gonna make me feel? But six months into it, people are going, I am free. I don't have to do stuff. Yeah. I don't have to turn up to church every single time. I don't have to. And I'm not saying that those things were wrong or bad or anything like that, but it's given that the body of Christ, this big breath in to go, well, what would this look like? if I live from this paradigm of freedom. Yeah. And for the people in my own community, um, it's more time to do life with people. Mm. It's more time to love the ones that sit beside me. It's more, more time to sit in this place of revelation. Mm. And you now I'm not saying that the church programs are bad or anything, but often our church has become places and centers for people to come and be serviced in rather than be set free from. And um, for us, and for me as a pastor, it's this beautiful moment of going, what does this look like if everything changes in a moment? So you talk about a divine shaking, and I'm not just thinking it's just a little tremor that we go, oh, okay, now we can get back on with it. Mm. I'm thinking this is a time and season for church leaders and people of churches just to take that moment of deep breath in. What does it look like to wait on God now? Yeah. It doesn't look like being too busy. It doesn't look like burnout. It doesn't look like rush. It actually looks like presence. Yeah. And if we can start measuring our lives by the presence of the Father that we see and, and tangibly in, like you talked about having an encounter yesterday. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many people are watching and going, gee, I, I would love to have that each day. But I'm just mm -hmm. so, so busy. Mm -hmm. well, what would it look like for the Father to say, enter in today? Yeah. Just enter in. Maybe at the end of this, we can do another one of those encounters that we love to do, Lana, where we draw yeah. people into those places of imagination that yeah. they too can have this place of, uh, of waiting on God. Yeah, I think that would be really good. Yeah, I think that's really powerful. Um, just before I go on, um, I saw one or two people said the static is back again. Um, I can hear, can you hear something, Matt? Yeah. Um, it's clear at my end. Okay, because every time you speak, I can hear it crackles really loudly in my ear. Um, okay. Have you got, you got earphones in? I've got earphones in. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. No, that's uh, all right. Um, guys, can you just give me a thumbs up? Like when Matt's speaking, can you hear? It's when Matt speaks. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, not exactly. Let me, just, um, let me just mute myself and I'll just check okay. it. Yeah, go. Okay. Okay, guys, now this is the practical waiting, <laughs> right? So here we go. Let's have some patience for a sec. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Is that working any better? No, it's no. still crackling. Okay. It's not too bad. It's on Matt's like a bad movie reel. Is that better? Is well, that no, any better or that not? Got la well, that got worse then, yeah. Mm. Mm. I'm not sure, Lana. Okay. If it's too if it's too distracting, um, we can maybe start it up again, maybe. 
Yeah, I'll hold it. we might have to. Um, I mean, I can deal with it. But guys, can you let me know on your end? Is it is it really hard to hear? It's worse. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So shall we? Okay. Some people are saying that it's quite intense, and other people are saying that it's not. Okay. Let, <laughs> let me let me leave the studio and come and come back in on it. Okay. And we'll see how we go. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll sit here and wait. All right, guys. So um, just while uh, Matt jumps off and, uh, and comes back on, um, I just want to share this with you um, because it, it kind of goes off what Matt was saying about um, the shaking that's happening. This week I was uh, in my office here and I was doing some work and, uh, and I, as I do often while I'm working, I'll have some worship music on in the background or I will um, be listening to a message and I happen to be listening to Bill Johnson's latest, um, I think it must have been Sunday night service. And, uh, and right at the end of his message, he said these words, I believe we're about to enter into an upgrade of awe that is going to shock us and it really just um spoke to me because i believe that that's where we are right now that we're about to enter into this place of awe and wonder and and part of that place is the place of waiting on the lord and that place of seeking his heart so we have matt back again is it working any better now or not <gasps> yay yes there's no it there's is? no crackle okay <laughs> <laughs> apologize for that I'm that's not right. sure what the problem was. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. It's gone. So that's good. It's called a um, divine reboot, Lana. That's what, what it that's, is. Do. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yay. Everyone's, everyone's celebrating. Yay. Um, yeah, Matt, I was just saying while you were, uh, while you were entering back in that I was listening to Bill Johnson's, um, so it must have been Sunday night message. Um, that's just gone. And right at the end, he said, I believe that we're about to be upgraded in our awe of the Lord. He said, and I, I believe that we're about to even be shocked by the awe of God. He said, because in that place, the purest oil flows through us. And, uh, and that just spoke to me again of this place of lingering before the Lord. Like you think of, it was, a, it was Joshua that lingered, right? He lingered in the presence of God. He waited upon the presence. He didn't want to leave, you know, when the glory of God yeah. had come, you know, you, you have that place. And I think again, like it just speaks to where we're at regarding, you know, not running back to what was, not trying to, you know, implement, build and fill this moment, but actually being okay with the slowdown and saying, okay, Lord, like, Again, see, I come. You could ask me to preach on fasting, and I'd come right back to the same point. Being in the place of the the first love, you know, that place of burning adoration for Him, and that's the place where I'm in awe and wonder of who He is. Like I was, you know, on my dad's feet, and I was looking up at my mm -hmm. dad, and I'm like, wow, I love my dad, you know. And in that place, then the purity flows, the oil flows. And to me, I feel like the Lord is really simplifying things in this hour. He's simplifying. He's bringing us back to the foundations. He's bringing us back to, I love the words you use, Matt, the original design. Like he's bringing us back to that place because I know the Lord has corrected me at times. He said to me, Lana, you overcomplicate things. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, Lord, please simplify it for me. Well, Jesus yeah. simplified it, didn't it? You know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. You know, like I just think sometimes we can overcomplicate things. And, uh, yep. Yeah. I, I think we've chatted about that too before. The concept of overcomplication is usually because we don't understand something. And mm. the whole concept of the love of God it means there's things that we can't understand. And so whatever we can't understand, we'll either avoid or we'll try and create a theology around um, yeah. when Jesus is just going, how about we just love? How about that? And like you say, with uh, going back to the Father's presence, I'm always, as you know, going back to the Father's love. Yeah. And that's why I think when the two of us start speaking together, the Father's presence and the Father's love become a profound statement that flows from it. Yeah. See, one of the things where I'm sort of in Scripture at the moment too is the, um, the Shafar uh, call in the Old Testament. Um, when Moses was at Sinai, God said to him, the people are not to approach the mountain until we have a blast of the ram's horn. Mm. 
Yeah. Um, which when I read that, I, I don't know why I hadn't read that before. I don't know how I'd missed that before. It's just like, wow, I've read this scripture so many times. But inside of it, um, the, the ram's horn blew and the people gone, no, 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 we're, we're not up for that. You go up there, Moses. And so a generation of people missed an opportunity to approach the father face to face like Moses did. Wow. And I wonder, I wonder today in this divine reset moment where this is not, I wonder, I believe that this is another time that the shafar has blown, the ram's horn has blown and the father has drawn us. And for some people like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if I'm going to be able to hear God in that. And so fear controls our directions. And anytime fear changes the course of direction of your life, you know that you're actually starting to listen to the wrong voice. But there will be those like Joshua, like try and get me out of God's presence. Yeah. Like you're not going to do it. And like Moses, you can go back down the mountain, but I'm actually going to stay here right mm -hmm. in the tent. And I'm actually going to stay here in the presence of God. And again, we, I think we're releasing a, uh, a community of Joshua's mm. that are willing to believe yeah. that the ground that they stand upon is God's. The ground that they stand upon is something that the Father has given to it. And I don't mean like a, a physical inheritance of the physical ground. I mean of the spiritual world that we're actually moving into and that place of we're reclaiming all that Satan has stolen from us. And we're not re just reclaiming it to be restored. It's like Jesus is like, yep, that's cool, but I'm actually going to overflow that place. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to pour out from that place. There's going to be an abundance in that place. And I think at times, Lana, the church, and I know myself, we've not been good on explaining what that is. Yeah. We just say, you're going to live a full life. And people mm -hmm. go, awesome, that's cool. Yeah. I, I would like to do that. Yeah. Well, how do we do that? Yeah. Well, we, we learn to listen. We learn to wait. Yeah. We discover the joy of patience rather than the fear of patience. Yeah. We discover the power of self-control, not just going, oh, why am I such, a, uh, why am I so incompetent? Why do I keep making the poor choices? And when we want to discover the fruit of the Holy Spirit in that, mm. abundance actually starts looking like relationship. It mm. starts looking like power. It starts looking like love. Uh, and I'm part of my own community. I've been pushing into that concept. So we love the miraculous. We love seeing God do supernatural stuff. But if I make that the priority, I lose the conversation on love. And I believe people get healed in safe environments. And so for a person to be loved draws them into a place of safety. And all of a sudden you have a community who's looking at them through a lens of the kingdom. And all of a sudden you start seeing the power of God start working. So, yeah. So good, of, Matt. That's so yeah. good. And I, I want to read a scripture and then I want to jump on that just quickly, what you were saying. Um, in this word that the Lord gave me yesterday, um, he said to me, Lana, um, he said, I am, I'm, there's a fresh baptism, he said, of the fire of my presence and my love that are going to be upon, um, especially upon these ones that are called to herald this message of return to the first love. Well, what scripture did he give me? He gave me Ephesians 3, 14 to 20. And he said, you know, I'm going to mark my people afresh with the revelation and impartation of this truth. Now, I know we know this scripture or these scriptures very well. But as I always say, you know, let's approach the word of God hungry and knowing that it's living and it's active. And every time we approach it, there's a new revelation um, or a deeper revelation that the Lord is wanting to give us. So I'm going to read this. And as I read this, let the Holy Spirit minister to your heart. So Ephesians 3, it says this, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory... He may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you, you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we could ask or think according to the power that is at work within us. Now hold on because I want to read it to you from the Passion Translation because they're both just, that was the ESV. Now this is the Passion. So I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on earth, 
and I pray that he would unveil within you, oh, unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside of you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Then you will be empowered to discover what every holy one experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions, how deeply intimate and far reaching is his love, how enduring and inclusive it is endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding this extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of god never doubt god's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this he will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination he will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you oh sailor my goodness me i'll see you all next week i'm gonna go and sit on this for the next week <laughs> oh my goodness me like i just i felt like i needed to read that scripture and especially here in the passion translation um it says here then by constantly using your faith the life of christ will be released deep inside of you and the resting place of his love the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. I felt like there were people that are watching that the Lord wants to really minister to you right now and just and really speak to you that this is a time where he is bringing you into that place of, of revelation and impartation of his love that is so deep that is so high that's so wide you can't comprehend it but it becomes the life of christ becomes the root and source of your life and in that place i just see that your identity is going to flourish there's going to be such a healing that's going to take place in hearts just on this broadcast today i just keep feeling this ache in my heart and and i know it's not mine and, and i said to the lord what is this and he said lana my, there's a lot of aches and and pains in my people's hearts and so I want to release over you that, that promise, that truth of Ephesians 3, that this is the hour where you will be marked afresh with an encounter with Jesus. What does it look like for the life of Christ to be unveiled in your heart, in your life? What does it look like for you to move deeper into the revelation of the life of Christ and his love being the very source and root of your life? I feel like there's a real transition happening for many of you, a real refreshing and a real healing that is going to take place. And I encourage you to really jump on Ephesians 3, 14 to 20 and spend time with the Lord. Be asking the Holy Spirit for greater revelation of his love. Ask him for greater revelation of the life of Christ that blossoms within you. And I feel like there's a real healing that's going to take place for many of you. Yeah. Is if one of those verses which always speaks to me is that verse nineteen that you just spoke. Yeah. When love surpasses knowledge, mm. like that alone, that, that that one little phrase for me, that needs to be unpacked in my own spirit, which means that love cannot be taught. Yeah. It has to be encountered. Mm. So I can tell you how God loves me. I can tell you how Trish loves me. I, I can tell you how friendships work, but to encounter it is way different than, than teaching it. And see, I think for so long, like I grew up singing the song, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Yeah. And when I got older, I thought, you know, I don't want to just know it because the Bible tells me so. That's right. I want to know it because the Father today, who is the same yesterday and today and forever, is still doing the same things and he's still in, and we're still encountering him we're still in those places of, of presence and i and this is where for me like even when i started on this journey of the prophetic and teaching it and helping people understand it it was like have i ever really been taught this stuff mm. have i actually sat in this place to go that's actually a real place and how about if i walk with you we can actually discover it and in opening that and giving permission to that to people to do that all of a sudden i was encountering things that i could not teach mm. 
I was experiencing emotions and feelings and relationships that I couldn't, I couldn't explain to you how that happened or why that happened. I can meet someone for the very first time and it felt like I've known them forever. And the only conversation that flowed from that was what God was doing between us. Yeah. And it's like, this needs to be released for this generation that, that we're in. And, and so we're not having Christians wandering around going, where is this love? Why is this love not happening? But we've got communities of people that want to lean into this kind of love and actually want to experience it and encounter it and, and, and want to see it transform and change our lives, change our relationships and change the, the places and how we love ourselves and, and love others. I, I know I feel like I'm a bit on repeat with this, but it's it's such a profound place where knowledge, where, the, where love surpasses knowledge. The love of Jesus surpasses what I can understand. Mm. We're actually into a new realm right there. So good. And I think that that's exactly a word like, oh my gosh, like that is such a word for right now. Like I could sit here and just unpack that, that, that statement of, you know, like just even the love surpassing knowledge. Like I just go, oh my gosh, like that is such a word for right now. You know, yeah. it is, it's such a word for, for what the Lord is doing right now. And, and I feel like even as you were speaking, Matt, that there's just I can feel this this impartation I can feel this sweet presence of the Lord just wanting to draw people deeper into that place of encountering him and you know even things that you were saying like you know have I even learned these things and and I think part of I'm coming right back to this slowdown this matrix thing that I saw yesterday like while you were saying that I'm, I'm seeing this matrix picture again and I, I felt this invitation of the Lord like I've read that scripture how many hundreds of times, you know, and you have read, you know, the scripture mm. you're talking about and about the shofar being blown. You're like, mm. whoa, I never saw that before. And now suddenly yeah. I saw it. And I feel like there's this invitation from the Lord right now in, in, in scripture, especially those things that we have, you know, we've read over a thousand times. We know them really well to actually stop and to sit in, in this sailor time that we're in and go, okay, hang on a sec. Lord, what does it actually mean that love surpasses knowledge? What does that mean? What does that look like? Or, or Lord, what does it look like for the life of Christ to be unveiled within me? And I, I just, I feel this stirring, this rumbling of awakening. And I feel this rumbling of revelation where things are, are going from what I've always known to actually know now they're becoming part of me. Now I yeah. really know. Now I'm really understanding. And, and I, as you were speaking, Matt, I saw this picture of um, Jesus and he was grabbing people by the hand one after another and he was leading them into these fields. Mm -hmm. Well, it was one large field and as far as I could see, it was just full of wheat and it was golden. And, and the wheat was quite long and he was leading people into this place. And then they were sitting in the midst of like, you know, if you sit in like tall wheat, like you can hardly be seen. Like they, he was sitting down with them. And it was this place of like, I could feel obviously the, the sense of harvest, but I could feel this place of such deep connection with the yeah. Lord where he was like, hey, I want to explain things to you. You know, yeah. and in this place... Of, of me explaining these things to you, this transformation that's taking place. There was nobody else there. It was this place of intimate encounter and love. Yeah. Like, just so beautiful. So, so beautiful. See, when, you, when you unpack a vision like that, Lana, like the concept is you see the wheat, which means the hard ground has been ploughed up, which means the seed has been sown, uh, which shows that so many areas of lives have dealt with the unbelief. So the hard ground in the Bible means unbelief. And so when the Bible comes and says, plow up the hard ground of your heart, it's, it's dealing with those places of unbelief. Mm -hmm. And so for Lana, for you to have a vision like that, one speaks very powerfully to where you are, to where your family is, to where you and Kev are sitting, the way that you're raising your children, that the wheat and the, the, the things that flow from that, it's a very, very powerful uh, itch. And mm -hmm. the length of this field uh, just shows just the abundance of the food, which is revelation. That's what... Um, uh, food in the Bible represents as revelation. Uh, and again, it shows that you have an abundance of food of revelation to give. 
Now, one of the things I've stopped doing, um, I've stopped saying I'm hungry. I don't know if I've shared that with you before, Lana. Yeah. So I've got an appetite for the kingdom. I'm not hungry because if it's hungry, it means I'm not eating, but I've got an appetite. <laughs> and <laughs> and I, wa- I want to feast because I'm invited to feast tables, right? Yeah. And I love that imagery. And even your, your word, if we go back to that, about yeah. changing places at the table. Mm. Eat something different. Mm. Find a, a new revelation and test it. And if it doesn't work for you, just move to another place and listen for what the Father's doing throughout the kingdom of God, right? Mm. And, and, and so it, it allows us to then to taste and see that other things in the kingdom are actually good. Mm. And when we taste it, they're good. I, I have this phrase that tasting and seeing is for tourists, but feasting is for families. And, oh, and, wow. and it's this concept that in the Old Testament, we were encouraged to taste and see that the Lord is good. But in the New Testament, Jesus is gone, come to the feast. Wow. Come up and sit beside me. And it's this place of revelation in the New Testament where Jesus meets Zacchaeus or he meets the two from Emmaus at a place of meal and he, and he satisfies an eternal hunger that's right there. And what he discovered is they have an appetite. And so like, I, I, if I'm hungry, it means that the appetite there is right there and it's now a time to move in. And I, I know this might sound like semantics to some, but for me it's help, helping me change the way that I see my heavenly dad yeah he is on offer at all times his presence is always with me i always have an open heaven because jesus is my open heaven and and i i for so long not believed that because i've just not thought that way and i've had to stop myself to realign with my heavenly dad and his promises have always been present his goodness and mercy always following after me these are beautiful passages of scripture but they need to have traction in our lives today just like you're saying That's really good. And I want to um, just jump on something quickly and then we can um, we can do an activation if you'd like. Yeah. Um, you reminded me, it's funny because I remembered this at the start of the broadcast, it slipped my mind. And then when you said the word, I went, oh my gosh, yes, I was going to dive on this. So for as long as I can remember, Matt, um, you have been talking about tables and you've been talking about revival happening around tables. And yesterday, what I found so interesting um, in the midst of writing up this encounter that I had, when I was, I got to the part about the houses burning a light with the fire of God. As I was writing it, I went, oh my gosh, when I was in that encounter, people were around the tables. (laughs) You know, they were around what looked like a dinner table. And so I just, for those that may not have seen the word, I'll just um, tell you a little bit, just very quickly, because I know we've been going for nearly an hour. Um, But I began to see these people that were mantled with this message and impartation of the fire uh, to be released, calling the church back to the first love. But they were having gatherings around tables in their homes with other believers. And as they shared the revelation and burning message of returning, I saw the fire of God falling so strongly in homes. People were being branded afresh with the fire of his presence and his love. It was explosive baptisms of fire in homes around tables all across the globe. I then saw these ones moving from their homes into communities and the word community transmission and community transformation thundered. Now, guys, when I write a prophetic word, I want to say this. People have said to me before, is that just flowery language that you use to describe an encounter? No. If I write the word thundered, it's because the voice of the Lord thundered in this encounter. And usually when the Lord speaks like that, it means that it will be so profound and so powerful that it shakes everything. So I just want to say that because I know a lot of people are like, are you just using kind of artistic language? Well, no, that's exactly what happened in the encounter. So community transmission and community transformation. And so then the impartation and fire that was being released into the hearts of burning adoration and pure love for Jesus was so intense that they kept going out into their community, set alight by his fire and his love, and the fire was spreading. And I kept hearing the words, the word wildfire. 
And then you could read on the rest of the word. I saw mothers picking up their children and dropping their kids off at school and they were talking with other mums and suddenly there was just this move of the spirit that was happening between mothers and then it was happening in all these different places. But the reason I bring this up is because I, I love what you were saying, Matt, about feasting at the table of the Lord. I believe that, you know, in, right now in the spirit, in the place of our intimate relationship with the Lord, he is inviting us to that feast table. He's inviting us to constantly feast on the revelation that he's releasing, the fresh bread that is being released out of heaven every day. You know, I'm waiting, like it says in Proverbs, I'm waiting at wisdom's doorway daily to hear the word of the Lord for the day, right? So as I'm at that table, right the the fire of his presence the fire of his love is coming upon that place and then in the natural manifesting in my home and you know and the revival the fire of god the reformation is happening here and then it's flowing out into the community bringing community trans like it's it's actually community transmission and community transformation and i want to say this is very interesting i actually said to the lord in this encounter Lord, you're using the word community transmission when that is a very much the language that we're hearing in the media right now, right? There's a virus that is being spread. It's being transmitted in the communities. And the Lord's like, yes, that's what the enemy is trying to do. But what is, what am I saying? I'm saying that the fire of my love is falling at the tables and that is spreading into communities. And there's a community transmission of the wildfire, the, the fiery presence of God's love. And nobody was disqualified. The Lord didn't say, if you, have a, if you have a pulpit, if you have a large ministry, he was saying those that have what Matt said, an appetite, right, for Jesus, an appetite for him. He's looking for those with the appetite, right? The fire of God is falling, mums, dads, children and as i catch that fire of who he is and the fire of the revelation of his love and his presence then when i'm going out i'm spreading the fire i know we know this i know we know yeah. this but do we really know it like do yeah. we really know it so yeah. so good Matt. really really good <laughs> so you set me yeah. off and then we could be here for the next <laughs> couple of weeks <laughs> awesome yeah, so just good. lighten the fire um <laughs> so good <laughs> I wonder, Lana, whether do we believe in the power of love or do we not? Yeah. Do we believe that love is more powerful than COVID? Yeah. Do we believe it's more infectious than COVID? Yeah. Now, I, that's it. That's both an encouragement and a challenge. Yeah. Because if the the body of Christ believe for that, yeah. then we would see the world change as quickly as COVID has hit our world. And I just want to say that that's not to put any kind of concept of shame on us. That's just to allow us into an understanding of what love can do. Yeah. We've talked about it. We've given you knowledge on it. But now it is time for encounter. Yeah. Now it is time to meet. Now it is time to do what the Father has asked us to do. And what is that? Well, Jesus loved those that the Father placed in front of him. That's John 17. Yeah. I've not turned away anyone. I've given them your word. I've taught them and shown and revealed who you are to all those the Father brought along your path. Today, in every one of our lives, uh, for you guys in America, it's the end of your day. For around the world, it's the start of our day. The Father is drawing people into your world that are about to catch love. Yeah. Okay? And that takes courage. That takes boldness. That takes vulnerability at times. Um, but what it takes is a step of faith to believe that God is love and that any time you love, God does something supernatural. Mm. So good. And I just I'll just end with this. Like, I think that it's really cool the way that the Lord, and you started with this, Matt. I love how when we, we just chat like this, you know, we don't come with pre-planned notes. We come and just, you know, surrender this to the Lord and see what he does. But you started with basically the, the language around um, everybody has a voice and ev and this is the hour where God is raising up the church and the, the awakening that what I carry is powerful, what you carry is powerful, you have a voice, you hear the Father's voice and you know the day of, um, I want to say this right, but you know the celebrity Christianity you know, where, where it's, you know, the, the, the amazing, you know, kind of, we've got lots of amazing leaders all across the earth, but there's been this model in the church of, you know, very much looking 
to you know that type of model where uh, the large platforms it looks a certain way i'm not saying that you know these amazing leaders are not going to continue to extend the kingdom and be used absolutely they will but i believe that the model that model god is shaking and he's bringing this awakening that says hang on a second hang on a second i can hear the voice of god I have, I have a voice, you know, I know what it is to live in intimacy with the Lord and I am growing in the revelation of his love and the, the, the place of awakening that every time I love, I, something supernatural happens. Hmm. There is just such an awakening taking place where God is awakening the entire body of Christ to, no, 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 you're not insignificant. You know, somebody else may have said it before, but they haven't said it the way you've said it. They haven't said it in the creativity that you've said it. They haven't said it the way the Father designed you to say it. There's such an awakening for the church to arise right now where everybody has a voice. You know, everybody, everybody loves, everybody has a part to play. It's not just the head, we're a body, right? So we need the toes, the fingers, the feet, the knees. We need all of it. And this yep. is the hour where God is saying, hey, I'm waking you up to my love, to who I am, but I'm also bringing you to this place of awakening that wherever you go, you know, wherever your feet tread, you're, you're releasing my love, you're extending the kingdom, and that yep. you're powerful because of who you are in me. It's powerful. So, so good. Mm. So, so good. So I know we've been going for a while, Matt. Shall we quickly um, just end with... Um, an activation would you like to lead because I know you are just so anointed for this <laughs> um, and just will yep. just lead people in an encounter yeah for sure for sure thanks Lana no worries so when we do an encounter if people aren't familiar with that language it's effectively using your imagination to see something and um, again it's not a difficult thing to do just for generations of Christians we've just not taught it uh, as kids, we get it, we fully understand it, and we do it. Um, but as adults, at times, it becomes a bit of a struggle. Mm. But if I can get you to imagine and just use your imagination to think about a table, the very feast table that, that Lana might be prophesying over us, I want you to think of a table. In your imagination, I want you to build it. I want you to think of how old that table is, what the table is made of, how many people can sit at that table? And allow that to build in your imagination. Look for the detail. If you can't see it, just go with the first thing that drops into your mind and your heart. Allow that to become a part of the kingdom as it builds there, that feast table of Jesus. Now into that, I want you to imagine a meal on that table and allow that meal to be something that uh, is of your dreams, of, of whatever you could imagine that you can put on that table and allow it to build and, and to see it. For some of you, you might be around a small table and, and it's just a very intimate moment. For others of you, it might be for many. I want you to use your imagination to think of who is at that table. Allow Jesus to show you the ones that he has placed at your table. For some of you, you won't even know um, some of those people. And that's because that's of the future. The Father's showing you something for the future. Then I want you to imagine Jesus coming to the table. Allow Jesus to be uh, wherever he wants to be. Let him sit wherever he wants to sit. And then into that, ask Jesus where he wants you to sit. And wherever that is, however it makes you feel, allow yourself to sit where Jesus has asked you to sit. For some of you will be beside Jesus, others will be probably across from Jesus. Some of you might find yourself a distance down the table. None of it's wrong. All of it's okay. If you're a distance down the table, you might well be with people that the Jesus wants you to be with. If you're across from the table from Jesus, he's what he wants intimacy. 
He wants to look you in the eyes. If you're to the right or the left, it's a place of honour. I did this once with a person and they found themselves they couldn't come to the table because they were so full of shame. And in the vision, this person watched that Jesus got up from the table and led them to sit right beside him. Their feelings fought that because they didn't feel worthy of it. It is not about whether you determine you're worthy or not. Jesus has already done so. And in doing so, he is pouring his love upon you. Today, let this encounter with Jesus sit with you. Feel it and know it. Bless you guys. So good. Oh, Matt, I'm just watching. I was watching the comments and... Yeah, just lots of uh, teary faces and I can just feel the oh, the sweet presence of God, just that, that place of intimacy. Thank mm. you so much. It's so beautiful. Guys, I want to encourage you to write it down, like what, mm. whatever that encounter was that, um, that you just had, um, write it down when you get off this broadcast or write it down now and, uh, and really, you know, sit in that place because I think it's really interesting you know, even Matt, as Matt was sharing, it, it tells a lot, you know, um, where I was at, like in my own vision, like where I was at the table, where is Jesus? And even hearing things like, you know, Matt, where you were sharing that somebody couldn't even come to the table, you know, but Jesus getting up from the table. Oh, that's, yeah. that's our Jesus. That's our Jesus. And guys, I just, I feel like there's going to be um, quite a few of you that are going to receive some healing. You already have. I felt it while Matt was mm. ministering. I could feel it flowing. But I feel like there are some, the, like almost like these moment or this moment you just had is actually a springboard um, that the Lord's going to take you into some deeper encounters. So I encourage you to write it down and just go back and visit it again with the Lord. So thank you so much, Matt. As always, what a what a joy. You know, here we are at one, an hour and 13 minutes, and it feels like I've been on with you for 10. <laughs> so um, thanks so much thanks, again. No, Such thank a joy. You. Mm. Um, for people that may um, be new to following you, Matt, how, what's the best way that they can do that? Yep. Um, so uh, there's, a, there's a few ways. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can contact me through my church, Haberfield Baptist Church. I'll get someone to put that in the chat bar as they, they're going. Uh, I do a thing called prophetic mentoring, which helps people hear and listen for the voice of God. And someone who's watching who's done it can drop the email address in there. So if you're interested in doing this sort of stuff of listening for the voice of God, mm -hmm. uh, it's something that I run um, in establishing uh, that you can hear and then you can move into that place. I am on Facebook, but you can follow me there um, as well. I'm, and um, But you can follow the church at its YouTube, at its Facebook page or its website. We've got a brand new website coming in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Um, so it'll look a lot cooler, I'm guessing. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word. Um, that's, what, that's what I keep getting told. So I'm, I'm believing for it. But yeah, but thanks, Lana. Really appreciate you giving me this opportunity. Oh, it's always a joy. Thank you so much again. Guys, um, I encourage you. Um, oh, there we go. Courtney's on. Hello, Courtney. Yeah, she she wrote, there you go. She wrote the email there. So you guys can, um, yeah, contact uh, Matt that way through Facebook, YouTube, and there's, um, it, I've spelled it right, Haberfield Baptist Church. Yes. Yep. So I encourage you to do so if you aren't already. So, well, we bless you guys. Thank you so much for joining us again. And uh, we, I know that so many of you have been impacted and blessed um, by what Matt was sharing and what the Lord did. So we rejoice in that and we look forward to uh, seeing you guys again soon. Alrighty, bless you guys. See ya.